I've lost my drum. I've lost my Indian drum. I've lost my drum. I've lost my Indian drum. I have a drum. The drum is mine. I have a drum. She's doing fine. But I've lost my drum. My Indian drum is gone. Soon it will be autumn. My God, what have I done? I have a drum. The drum is mine. I will treat her poorly. There is no need to whine. Drum lost. Drum found. Drum lost. Drum found. No drum, no party. I have a drum. Where's my Indian drum? Look skyward, moron. My eyes, they see no drum. Drum no, no drum. Drum lost. Your drum is here. I've lost my Indian drum. <laughs> Snake. Pretty good. <laughs> good to see you. Hey, how was your weekend? Oh, not too bad. A little too short, though. How was yours? <laughs> good, but a little short. <laughs> <laughs> Business. Business. Yeah. <sighs> so. so. <sighs> well, I'd now be willing to take a look at the proposal your client is making to my lorry. Uh, on behalf of Dennis, I'm uh, happy to show it to you. It's perfectly straightforward. A little too damn straightforward, Gerald, don't you think? Uh, what do you mean? I'm sorry, I can in no way say that this represents the interests of my client. It's a standard itinerary, Gerald. Dinner, dancing, and intercourse. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Dinner, dancing, and intercourse. You mean a quick hump, don't you, Gerald? I do not mean a quick hump, Gerald. Do not use that expression in this office. Children come in here. Dinner, dancing, and intercourse. What do you think my client is, huh? A $90 an evening hooker? <laughs> this is dinner at the plaza, Gerald. Oh, really? So she's a $120 an evening hooker, is that it? Well, at least a hooker comes across. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> Gerald, do I sense that uh, your client has certain feelings for my client? My client makes $62,000 a year. Ah, but does your client have certain emotional interests? towards my client. He's got a really great car and a mustache. Gerald, does your client love my client? Yes! No! He's not sure. Back off, Gerald! <laughs> I'll back off, but perhaps now you'd be willing to take a look at the proposal my client's making to your client. You forgot one thing, Gerald. What's that? The actual date of the wedding and the color of the bridesmaid's gowns. Come off it, Gerald. It's a standard 17-week dating commitment. All my client wants to do is to get to know your client. Hey, all my client wants to do is to get to know your client. In a completely different way. I don't know. I think she's got to know quite a few clients. Let's just look at a roster of ex-boyfriends. Gerald, that's inadmissible and you know it. The Doobie Brothers? <laughs> All right, perhaps we were a little bit hasty with the 17-week dating proposal. Perhaps we can accommodate the obvious interests of your client a bit more. How about this? A six-day schedule with possible sexual intercourse on date six. <laughs> uh, Gerald, I'm no longer interested in this possible sexual intercourse you keep selling me on. 
Last time it turned out to be a cheap hand job at the drive-in. Your client ejaculated, Gerald. Sadly. Very sadly. sadly. Let's just let sleeping dogs lie, shall we? Three date schedule guaranteed sexual intercourse on dates two and three. Huh? Five date schedule. Guaranteed sexual intercourse on date five. Now that's a one-way ticket to Loveland, Gerald. That's a heap of good loving. That's a love arena. That's a love fest. That's a love Woodstock, for God's sake. Come back. Gerald. Jerry. Jer. Guh. Why don't we forget the guaranteed sexual intercourse clause? Okay. Why don't we let nature take its course? Why? You know, the good old-fashioned way? Yeah, okay. A one-day schedule with a guarantee that your client will consume 27 ounces of gin on that evening. Come off it, Gerald. That's panty peeler and you know it. <laughs> Call it what you will, it's a tool of the trade. I'm sorry, Gerald. Come on, she only weighs 105 pounds for God's sake. I believe she weighs 111 pounds, Gerald. In shoes? All right. I'm sorry, I can't say you're letting her drink more than eight ounces of gin. Jesus, I think she could drink uh, 14 ounces of gin. Maybe 10, maybe 10. I think she could scarf down 12 ounces of gin. 11 ounces of gin. 12 ounces of gin on an empty stomach. 11 on an empty stomach. 111. Done. Okay. I'll let my secretary pick up the contracts Monday. Yes. See ya. <laughs> Wendy's, hard day at the movie premiere. Don't worry about me. I mean, I'm only crushing your heads. Crush, crush, crush. Hey, miss, aren't you beautiful? Feed the homeless, you bimbo. I catch you. Crush. You too, leather boy. Crush you. Crush, crush, crush. Oh, an outlander. Forget it, buddy. You'll never get in. You may keep your rounded head. I spare you. Not you, you bubbleheads. Crash, crash. Crash, crash. Ooh, what a Romeo. What a cigarette-smoking Romeo. What's this? The vomiting goddess is your date? You uncaring creep. I crush you. I crush you, crush you, crush you. Hey, little darling, let me help you get empty. A little bit more, a little bit more. Come on, a little bit more. That, that me <laughs> Oops, crushed you. Sorry. Well, at least there's no room for a hangover in a mangled head. And still they go, like sheep to the moon! <laughs> oh, won't those flatheads be a sensation, eh? They'll say, Nancy, who's your head crusher? <laughs> Me, by appointment only. This go down, flathead. Crush, 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 crush. what we are about to receive, please make us thankful. Amen. Amen. Well, let's tuck in, huh? It's wonderful, Mother. Yeah. Thank you. Good looking, Stu. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, we yeah. had a little bit of good news today. Oh, oh. yeah. It involved your grandpa. Oh, oh yeah. good. Yeah. Seems that grandpa had himself a little poo today. No. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That's great, grandpa. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. yeah, I pooped. <laughs> sure did. How long has it been, Grandfather? Wow, four years. Wow. Uh, you know, 
That's just like the Olympics. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I remember the last one. It was yeah. at my prom night. Oh, I remember that night. You looked so beautiful. Oh, so did your poo, grandfather. You know, I think this is the start of a lot of good things for us, McNeils. Our bowels are moving again. Here's mm -hmm. to it. You know, uh, you may be more right than you know. Oh? Because uh, today, on his history test, yeah. Derek pulled in a C. No. Yeah. You didn't. Yeah. You didn't. You little scamp. <laughs> yeah. And the teacher says it's not just an ordinary C oh. either. It's a special C. It's a C with promise. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well done. She says it's still too soon to say, yeah. but I might not be stupid. Oh. <laughs> just like a little Indian arrowhead, Grandpa. It's a winner. Mm. Mm. Do you want me to take that for you, Granddad? No, put it no, somewhere come safe. On, no, no yeah. come on. Come, come on, on. Gram. Just let her put it in the box yeah. for you. Oh, put it yeah. somewhere come safe, Grandpa. Come on. Come on. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 Grandpa dropped his pool. Oh, yeah. oh, here comes the dog. Oh, no, Mr. Edgar. No, 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 Mr. Edgar. Don't. Come on. No, 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 no. Well, it looks like the dog got your poo, Grandpa. I'm sorry. That was my last poo. No, no, no it, it wasn't. wasn't. No, it was. No. You, you lived to poo again, Granddad. Yeah. yeah, you've got the bowels of a man half your age. Yeah. You know what I think would be a, a good idea, Grandpa? If you ate a little bit extra tonight. Yeah, yes. yeah. No, I think yes. that'd be good. Yes? Yep. Yep. Eat Come up. on, is this the man that waited ashore on Omaha Beach June 6, 1944, I'm looking at? Hey, let's get back to work, soldier. <laughs> oh, that's nice to see. That's good, man. Oh, it's working. Is it's it? Working. Is it? Hey, traveler. <laughs> tired of Florida? Tired of Hawaii? Looking for something uh, a little different for your summer vacation? Something a little off the beaten track, perhaps? This year, why don't you come to me? Come on. Come to Scott. Come on. Come and frolic on the wondrous hills of my calves. The kids can climb them in the summer. And in the winter, I think you'll find skiing is in order. You'll enjoy washing all the way down to my peninsula toes, where the kids can enjoy a spirited game of hide and seek. Some of you more adventurous types might find the climb to the top of my knee more to your liking. Be sure to bring oxygen, as a thin mountain air can be disorienting. For those of you interested in refreshing the mind, as well as the spirit, why not spend some time in the attractions that I'm famous for? The Hall of Nipples, the House of Wax, and the world-famous caverns of my nose. Journey into the inner reaches of my skull. Who knows what ancient civilizations once dwelled there. And if it's nightlife you're after, then there's plenty of action to be found on the discotheque that is my belly. Afterwards, cool on in the pool of sweat that gathers in the small of my back. But what would a trip to me be without visiting my most famous landmark? One of the seven wonders of Scott. My lips. 
What do you do there? The ball's in your court. Tourist. For hundreds of years, modern science has endeavored to peel back the layers of ignorance, to shed light on the true nature of the universe, to replace yesterday's myth with today's proven fact. And it is to advance that cause that we must ask ourselves. <laughs> Are extraterrestrials dull? Here. It was here that I first saw the alien craft. I was struck by a blue beam of light. And I felt myself being lifted up off the ground. The next thing I knew, I was aboard the vessel. For the entire duration of my stay with the aliens, they never once turned off the TV. There was almost no conversation. And when they did talk, it was about what they were watching, usually my three sons. Being a dentistry student, I, of course, have a scientific mind. I would inquire about different things, such as uh, medical techniques, means of propulsion, uh, social organizations, but nothing. They just go, shh, Ernie's having girl trouble. It is believed that the aliens first visited the Earth at the very beginning of human history and mated with our ancient ancestors. How else can we explain How else can we explain people who say things like, I don't need to take drugs to have a good time? <laughs> How else can we explain New Age music? Could humans really have invented golf without alien intervention? <laughs> well, I was abducted during an open house in the outskirts of town. I asked the aliens if they wanted to study me or if they wanted to ask me any questions at all. So they asked me if I thought they looked good with a pipe. You see, they all smoke pipes. I thought it suited them, so I said, it suits you. They sort of smiled, turned around, and kept watching TV. We recovered this, these, near the site of an alien landing. And according to eyewitnesses, this is the outer garment of an alien's flight suit. <laughs> According to the lab, it is 50% wool, 50% alpaca. And in the opinion of the lab, it is a quality garment. Another thing is, the aliens all seem to be balding. Just think about it. A whole race of people brushing their hair forwards to hide the fact that they're balding. Even the children. The aliens? Absolutely splendid people. Top drawer, 100% all the way. Couldn't have enjoyed the abduction more. But why then have these reluctant astronauts come to this planet? What is their mission? What do they hope to gain? I believe the aliens are here to collect decorative spoons. My own store has been visited three times by three separate groups of aliens. And each time, although they uh, initially expressed a lot of interest in the beer mug shaped like a tit, their only purchase was the Stephenville commemorative spoon. In fact, the last group complained quite tellingly, I think. They said, why don't you have a spoon that just says Earth? It would save time. Such gift shop visitations now number in the thousands. Who knows? Perhaps one day when the last spoon has been collected, the aliens will leave this planet as mysteriously and uninterestingly as they came. But until that time, I know... But until that time, I shall continue to look to the night sky until I become drowsy and fall asleep.
sorry, guys. The party's over. That wouldn't happen if Elvis were my landlord. I have reason to believe that if Elvis were my landlord, my life would be a lot better than it is right now. People would come over and say, hey, great place you got here, Bruce. Got any vacancies? I'd say, ask the king. He's over there hosing the gunk off of something. He's always working. If Elvis were my landlord, we'd say stuff in the halls like, 42 tenants can't be wrong. <laughs> Gee, I could go to his house any time and borrow a cup of sideburns. If Elvis were the man. Hi, how you doing? Well, I just wanted to tell you to top your garbage bags before you put them down the chute. <laughs> Makes my job a much easier. Thank you very much. If Elvis were my landlord, it would be a thrill. Life would roust about and not stand still. We'd eat bargain cheesies, no prescription pills. If that share cropper son handed me my phone bill. If Elvis swept my halls. What do you mean you paid your rent to an Elvis landlord impersonator? <laughs> Remember what I told you? On the fool's rush in. Thank you very much. If Elvis were my landlord, he could come over any time. I'd say, sit down, King. Take a load off your scarf. Have some decaf tea. We'll plan your comeback quietly. Because if Elvis held my extra key, he could come right up to 403. I'd say, hi, my friends and I were just... Huh? Elvis. I just came up to fix your tub. Tub is like a voice. You don't work in the paps. The pups get rusty. Thank you very much. Elvis, do you want to watch TV later? Chips is on. I know it's your favorite. Actually, I don't feel too good. <laughs> Elvis? Elvis has left the building. Elvis? Elvis has left the building. I have your rent check, Elvis. I won't give it to the Dave Clark Five. Elvis? Elvis? Elvis has left the building. Elvis! Hey, you coming to my party tomorrow night? You got my address, don't you? It'll be a great party. Get there early. Get there at 9 o'clock. That's when the action starts at my party. See you there. Hey! Let him in! I said let him in. I'm talking to you, bouncer boy. Let the poor little pathetic spider in. Who died and made you God, eh, Mr. Bones and Muscle? I'm warning you, don't make me good. Yeah. Oh, God, my fingers. What a head. What a thick head. I can see why they gave you this job. Still. Rain juice everywhere. I crush you. I crush you. I crush you. Crush, 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 crush. Hey. Who? What? Who's singing that horrible song? Who's sing? Oh, stop singing! Stop it! Hey, are you okay? Hey! Hey! Hey, flathead! You need me? Okay, great. Uh, how did the vomiting go? Did you marry that guy? Huh? Ooh. 
look at you. You're a mess. You're a great big mess of a trendy. Come on. And, and, up. Steady. Come on. I'll take you to the bus stop. What bus do you take? Come on. Come on. Come on. Get a move on. That's it. Step lively. Come on. Move it out. Boy, you're out of shape, my friend. You should join the cadets. Or maybe even the army. Come on, it's tight. Hup, 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 hup. That's it. Oop, lost the shoe. Don't go back. It's bad luck. 